Our love for the Lord and our respect for Him and deep reverence will cause a person not to sin. We're focused in on Him. All right, here comes another thought. Uh, why did this happen? Well, it happened so that He could communicate written word to us. More to come next week, Lord willing, the creek don't rise. But I will say this about chapter 20. You cannot find a purer passage of word, uh, uh, God's literal word than what you do here. This is absolute. As a matter of fact, it's so absolute that he cut a slab of granite out of that mountain. And what did he do with his finger? He wrote it himself. Woo! Wouldn't you like to have looked on the original Ten Commandments? God's very finger wrote them. This is as pure of Word of God, clear cut, as I think you can get it. And you and I need to hold high this Bible, the very Word of God. I, I, I read a story this week. In Russia, uh, before the Communist Party collapsed, uh, a group got permission to distribute Bibles, New Testaments, but a limited number. The Communist Party said, uh, okay, we're going to do it because it's a book fair, but you can only distribute so many. They opened up their booth and thousands of people were standing in line. They gave away all the New Testaments and after all the New Testaments were gone, the next man in line said, can you give me the box that they were in? I want to have the box at least that those Bibles were in. Uh, when I've been in Romania and distributing Bibles there, I gave a Bible to an old man. I still have a, a slide of that. Uh, remember 35 millimeter film and slides, slide shows? I gave a Bible to a man, left it on his wagon bench. He was in the cornfield working. He came back. I walked over to him. Didn't he, he didn't even know I was there. This old man leaning on his horse and buggy, his horse and wagon, hand um, uh, weeding his corn crop was opened, had opened the Bible and was reading it and I got close enough to him to see tears rolling down his cheeks. I took a picture of him and walked away. He never knew I was there. To this day, and I'm sure he's in heaven now, but I, to this day, I'm not so sure he ever knew how that Bible got there. That's how consumed he was. Um, when I would give a Bible to people and not even knowing much of the Romanian language, um, uh, people would say to me, um, how much? And they would say Romanian, but they would do this. I understood the sign. And I would say in Spanish, it translated gratis means what? Free, free, free gratis, free. What? They would say. And I would hold the Bible out to them that I just gave them, and I'd open it just randomly, and I'd drag my finger across the print, and I said, you're required just to read it. One requirement, read it. You know what they would do, folks? They would sit down on the street curb and start reading it right then. Right then. Where's our respect for God's Word if people who've been under communist regimes would so respect it? Maybe we need to become communists for a while and have our Bibles taken away so that when we get them back, we respect it. Did the preacher just say that? Is there some truth in that statement? Maybe we need our Bibles taken away so that when we can get them back, we can respect it better. Maybe we should pray that that not have to happen. Amen? Ooh, the preacher's on one this morning. All right, here we go. Um, four last things I want to say, and I'm going to take just a couple of minutes to do that. But look at my outline. Point number three, things you need for your meeting with God. I think there's an old saying, if I give a man a fish, that's one thing, right? But if I can teach him how to fish, right? That's a step further. Uh, if you come and your only spiritual meal for the week is what I say from up here, you ultimately will starve to death. So as a Christian, you need to learn how to feed yourself. Here it comes. Ready? First thing I want to tell you is this. You need a place. Mount Sinai. Whew, how long would it take me to get to Mount Sinai? Uh, a couple of days of travel, right? All right. So it can't be Mount Sinai. You need a place where you and your Lord meet on a routine basis. Find a place. 
Um, if you're living single, if you're by yourself, <laughs> that, that's no big problem, right? Just turn off the TV. Um, throw away your TV, right? Okay? Uh, but turn off your TV. But, but have a place that's accessible. Um, mine is in our front room, uh, and I meet with the Lord early. I've got a lamp. I've got a table. I even got something I can stretch across my lap if I need to write stuff. I've got a, 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 a place. Um, when I was at home, when I became a Christian at age 16 and a half, uh, my bedroom was down in the basement. That's because nobody else wanted to be around me. All right? Uh, smile at that one, will you? Okay. But my bedroom was down in the basement. So after work every night, uh, I'd have dinner and get a sh- good shower. I'd go, home, go, go down in the basement, and there was my Bible. There was a little lamp. You know, I had my prayer list there. I was all by myself. That's a good place to meet with the Lord by yourself. So you need a place. Secondly, you need preparation. Sometimes we approach this so nonchalantly. Sometimes we think we're going to read our Bible and watch a football game at the same time. Shake your head no. Okay. Uh, By the way, uh, I would not advise you to read the Bible and watch the news at the same time. Okay, uh, no, no. Shut everything else off. Be prepared. Um, uh, And by the way, uh, I meet with the Lord in the morning. I I like to read my Bible at night times. As a matter of fact, I like to fall asleep with my Bible open. But that's not my special time. Because sometimes I've found that if I'm thinking a thought or I've I've been um, uh, meditating on a, a verse, when I fall asleep, that's in my sleep. Woo! And the old sourpuss preacher wakes up pretty sweet the next morning. All right? Well, maybe. I don't know. Do I? Okay. She's not saying anything. All right? So listen. Um, um, be prepared. Uh, drop everything else. And, and just focus on the Lord. I'm going to requote something. John 15:5. Jesus said, Apart from me, you can do nothing. Um, oh, can I tell you a story that happened to me this week? Uh, This week, I did a funeral for a 35-year-old young man that died of drug overdose. And and a friend, as I got started, uh, a friend of his said, Now, preacher, let me just tell you, for the last year, he was fighting a, a good battle, and he was trying to quit. And he had a Bible, and he knew his Bible. Guys, he still died of a drug overdose. May I say this loud and clear? Jesus said it himself, without me, you can do nothing. You can't beat things. You can't win over sin. You can't uh, win over addictions without Jesus Christ. Uh, If anyone's hearing me on the Internet now or um, uh, on the airwaves, however it might be published, may I simply say this, without Jesus, we're in a mess. With Jesus... We can win over anything. And God's people said, all right, a third thing I want to say is this. Obviously, you need his pages. When you're spending time with the Lord, he speaks to us right here. Right there it is. Okay? Everything he wants to say to us is right here. If he says something to you and you don't think it matches Scripture, call me and I'll help you out with that. If you hear a voice and it doesn't match Scripture, guess what? It ain't him. Okay, it matches the word. So obviously, have the Bible open. Ready? The B I B L E. Yes, that's the. All right, that's the book for me. Okay. So uh, God did not speak to Moses in visions. You know why? Because he'd always be chasing around for another vision. Um, there would be um, uh, uh, prophets of vision, and I know that there's visions and there's prophets in the Bible. But listen, God chose to. Put hard copy, no, no pun intended, but hard copy Ten Commandments in God's, in Moses' hands. So here we have God's Word. Open it. It's clear. It's easy to understand. You can discern it. That's where it belongs, right? Open it. And then, ready for this? I think you need pen and paper. When you spend time with the Lord, uh, be ready to write some things down. Uh, every once in a while, and you hear me say this, I actually have an original thought. Every once in a while. They come so rarely that I better write it down because my life is passing me by. And All right. So have a notebook. Have a piece of paper. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll admit to you two things. Um, uh, there it is. Uh, many times I might wake up in the middle of the night 
And it's like I've been working on something. I want to, I'm going to preach or teach on it. And the Lord just gives me some thoughts. And sometimes without turning on a light, um, I just I have pen and little scribble pads by my bed. And I'll just, in the dark, I'll just make my hand write the words and I'll decipher them later. Uh, but sometimes that happens. Personally, I like to journal in my own Bible. Uh, and in the margins of my Bible, time after time after time again, can you believe it? There it is. There's one. Okay. But, but I write comments in the margin of my Bible because the next time I read it, boom, it's there. Okay, so have pen and paper ready and be willing to scribble down some thoughts when you are reading and coming along. I think this is a great way to cultivate the soil, to tend the orchard, uh, to prune yourself, uh, to trim off the the stuff. Okay, and so I'm going to close with this thought. Ready? All right. Uh, two of you uh, are in the car, you're driving home, and you're saying, I'd like to do what the preacher suggests, but... Does that sound like a conversation? Uh, I'd like to do what the preacher suggests, but at bedtime, who puts the kids to bed? Or at dinner time, who's fixing a meal? Or in the morning, who wants to go to the gym and who gets to stay home? So uh, as a couple, as a family, uh, you might want to sit down with your spouse. You might want to sit down with your whole family and say, hey, listen, Dad wants to try this. How can this work? I have a very gracious family. Uh, we were together, by the way, last night, and uh, my three girls have been so gracious to me because years back I established my parking place. Lynn calls it my PlayStation. But, but uh, I got my chair, I got my ottoman, I got my table, I got my lamp, and that's where I want to read and have my coffee and pray and, and get thoughts together. And they have, they have respected that for all these years. Uh, so sit down as a couple if you need to and, and talk about how could this work. And by the way, uh, you might not want to start with 30 minutes. Start with 10 and get started that way. Uh, closing with this thought. Uh, when I think of the road to Emmaus and Jesus joining two disciples, don't you think he'd like to take a walk with you? Wouldn't you like to walk with Jesus? Oh, woo. And you know what? If I were walking with Jesus, I do declare I might reach out and get him by the arm so that I wouldn't stumble while we walked. Um, every time we go on vacation, we're at the beach, and I try my best to get a little private time with both of our girls. Lynn and I have walks on the beach. But I, I try to have a little private time with each girl. And uh, just walk the beach and uh, we can say things that, you know, uh, we might not have talked about during that year. If the old man here likes to take a, a little walk with his three girls, wouldn't the Lord like to take a walk with you? Let's bow our hearts and our heads together. And we're going to finish with a, a good old song. It's it's. A neat little song, a sweet hour of prayer, uh, and it's not mean to be um, shallow or uh, or vague or uh, uh, sing it and walk away. But I, I believe it's got some good words to it. Sweet hour of prayer. Uh, make a commitment, a promise in your heart that as a child of God, you're going to spend time with your Father, and you're going to try to do that in an uninterrupted way, a designated place, the Bible open something to write with in your other hand, and uh, walk with Jesus as if you were the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Lord, we need you, and we take seriously your words in John chapter 15 that without you, we can do nothing. So we pray, Lord, that you'd bless us as we learn more about what it means to abide with you and you with us. In Jesus' name. You have the handout. It's Sweet Hour Prayer. It's number 640 if you need to open a hymn book. But let's stand together and sing this last song. Sweet Hour of Prayer. Sweet Hour of Prayer that calls me from a world of care. Okay. Hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. That calls me from a world of care. And 
and bids me at my father's 